The U.S. housing market has been an intriguing topic right as we roll into the first quarter of 2023. And it's not just economists, it's not just home buyers, it's real estate investors, it's pretty much anyone and anybody has their eye on the housing market. So as we look into 2023 in the housing market, there is some uncertainty. So will the rates go up? Will the rates stay stable? Will the rates go down? What's going to happen next, right? On one hand, interest rates are going to go up, making mortgage payments higher. On the other hand, we're seeing prices go down as the economic recovery kind of takes hold. So in recent years, there's been a multitude of things that have had a profound impact on prices. Interest rates, inventory, new construction, the lack thereof, supply, demand. So with all these elements at place, it's important to paint an accurate picture of what we're seeing, what we're noticing as we go into the housing market in 2023. So the general trend over the last few years has been decreasing interest rates. And of course, there's no denying the fact that with rates as low as they are, it makes it favorable for not only home buyers, for home investors, but also for homeowners putting their house on the market because they know that that buyer is going to buy their property. As a result, you see increased in home values, home prices. Now, there's no denying it. We have seen a shift in housing trends. We have seen a shift in people placing their homes on the market as well as purchasing homes. However, that's changing. Now, even though the mortgage rates have nearly doubled in a year's time, you can still to this day purchase a house with $1,000 through an RD FHA insured loan. Now, when it comes to real estate, it has so much to do with local dynamics. It has to do with supply and demand, but also has to do with population. It has to do with people moving into a town or into a city. It has to do with job growth, how many jobs are available within a community, a town, or a city. So you also have to look at the cost of living as well as home values like Knoxville Tennessee, El Paso, Texas, Columbia, South Carolina. Those are just a few of the cities where the cost of living is lower and the real estate is lower. Rents are lower, cost of living lower, the affordability and the price of homes is lower in those cities. And as a result, those cities are projected to be the fastest growing cities as we roll into the next three years. And of course, when there's a decline of population, there's a decline of job growth like San Francisco and San Diego and Seattle, Washington. You'll see those home values tend to increase really fast and they also tend to come down. So there's always a really high peak and valley when it comes to a lot of large major metropolitan cities. But here are the facts. Regardless of where you live, real estate is hyper local and that is the universal truth. Real estate is not like the stock market. So when you have real estate, you can have a major metropolitan city. You can have a suburban area outside of that city and then you can have another little city next to that suburban city. And literally you can be 15 minutes minute drive apart and home values home prices are going to fluctuate they're going to be different literally from one 15 minute drive to another so we can't talk about the 2023 housing market without talking about new construction and new construction has been playing catch up so home builds home starts has been playing catch up since 2005 and here's the reason why you see from 2004 2005 to 2009 there was a drastic decline in home starts new construction in the united states so in 2004 there were 2 million new constructed homes five years later in 2009 there was just a half a million new constructed homes. Now today, as we roll into the first quarter of 2023, there's 1.3 million homes. So think about that. In 2004, there were 2 million homes. In 2009, there were a half a million homes. And then today, in 2023, there are 1.3 million homes. And this is why I say we're still going to see new construction. We're still going to see people purchasing properties because for literally a half a decade, we did not see that many new construction starts. We were climbing up a long hill. But you know, I've been selling real estate for three decades, and I remember back in the 90s when there was an urban movement. It seemed like everybody wanted to be and live in the cities. And now it's kind of shifted. And my mom used to always say, son, history repeats itself. So 30 years ago, you had people wanting to move into the city. Now, you have people wanting to move out of the city. And the two biggest reasons why people move out of inner cities, those reasons are safety and price. Those reasons are affordability and safety. They want to make sure that their family's safe, they're safe, and it costs less to live and it's more affordable to live out. That's why you have all these people. You see people commuting every day on the interstate. Most people are okay now driving 45 minutes to an hour one way to work because once they get to their little piece of heaven, if you will, it's quiet, it's less expensive, and most importantly, it's safe. Now, a big question is, should I buy a house in 2023? Should I invest in real estate in 2023? You are still investing in real estate. The big question is, is 2023 a good year to buy a piece of property? 
The quick answer is yes. And the reason why is because the interest rates are 6%. 6% on a 30 year mortgage. If you go rent somewhere, what are you going to pay? You're going to pay 100%. So do the math and think, okay, if I'm going to live in this property three to five years, what is it going to cost me to live in the property three to five years? But when I sell the property, what am I going to get back in return? If I rent a property, what am I going to get back in return? You can also buy a property, put a home warranty on the property. So if anything goes wrong with that property, it's covered with a home warranty. And those are renewable every year. So it's like you own a home, but you're living in an apartment because you never have to worry about fixing anything. But I get it. I call it being planted with seeds of doubt. Anytime you go on social media, Lord forbid, you can see all the negative hype and all the fear mongering people that spew information that's somewhat untruthful. Some of it's a little truthful, but at the end of the day, it's all in the way they spin it because negativity sells. Because we as human beings, we're curious to know, well, what's going on? What's happening? And then we also, in our subconscious mind, want to look and be informed to know it. How can I defend myself? Wait a minute. What's going on? What's happening? What do you mean the housing market is crashing? What do you mean it's falling? What's going to happen? And that's why we try to inform people that we have been in the business. I have been in the business of brokering and selling, investing, doing everything with real estate over the last 30 years. And as researching and doing it and still doing it and still having a company, I want people to make the best informed decision with the most factual information, not fear mongering and spewing negativity just to get a 30 second view so I can get paid through the algorithm on YouTube. Not why I'm doing this. So please hear me. The housing market is not going to crash. We're seeing a stabilization in the market simply because the interest rates for 10 years were below 4%. And literally within a six month time frame, interest rates doubled to 6%. So you had a decade with less than four, now you're at six. It's easy to see people are like, well, wait a minute, I'm not sure what's going on, what's gonna happen next? Cause that happened so fast, it created such an uncertainty. So you created a calming of the market, if you will. So now people, as we roll into 2023, it's been months and people are like, okay, let's just kinda, you know, it is what it is. What are we gonna do? You have to pay it, that's what it is. We can refinance that the rates go back down, even though it's 6%. That is an incredible interest rate. So I tell people, if you're gonna buy a house, it's up to you. You have to be comfortable. It's individualized. Will it fit within your budget? Will it fit within your income? Will you be stable in that home? I'll tell you one thing that's really nice is having a covered back porch and a covered front porch and having barbecues and having a garage. And it's hard to get all of that in a rental. Now you can find that in a rental house, but you know as well as I do, once you start really getting out there and looking at rental properties, not all of them are up to par. Don't get me wrong. I believe in owning rental property, investing in real estate, but at the end of the day, when it comes to owning real estate, especially for your personal residence, you want to make sure you own a home. And I know we get pushback on that. And there's other people out there that say, rent, 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 don't buy, just rent. But when it comes to buying real estate, there's no one size fits all. It has to be for the individual person. You have to be comfortable with that situation. However, the current market conditions make it pretty ideal to be able to purchase a piece of real estate. One, you only need $1,000 to buy a house. Two, interest rates are still incredibly low at 6%. And three, a lot of these home builders are offering crazy cool incentives. So when the interest rates took a jump, it stabilized the market. It made people go, hey, wait a minute, what's going on? However, home builders, they didn't stop. They kept building and building and building. As a result, they accumulated a little bit of a stockpile. So it worked out good for home builders because they were able to catch up. Now, as we roll into spring, what we're seeing is a lot of the home builders are offering crazy cool incentives. They're buying rates down to 4.9%. They're paying all of your closing costs. They're giving you big screen TVs. They're upgrading appliance packages. All of this stuff to your advantage when it comes to buying a property as we roll into this year. But most importantly, get with someone that you can trust. We have agents all around the country that can update you on the housing market trends. What's going on? What's happening? What's not? Where are prices high? Where are prices going down? Where's the best buys on new construction? Which one of these track builders are the best to go with right now? Who has the most inventory? And most importantly, be comfortable with your purchase. And know that whatever property you buy, you want to stay in that property three to five to six years. Because what we're seeing right now is we're not in the market where you'll be able to purchase a property and sell that property in 12 months. And keep in mind, if you sell a property in within less than two years, you're going to have to pay taxes on any gain that you make anyway. But you want to make sure that the house that you buy, you're going to stay in the property for three to five, six years. So to summarize it, in the first quarter of 2023, we're seeing an upward trend of people purchasing homes. We're also seeing an upward trend of people putting their homes on the market. So we're seeing a lot more resale as well as a lot more home buyers. So once again, we're seeing a pretty balanced market. But please know, a lot of people would say, not in my area, not in my market, not in my town, not in my city. And I get it. And that's why I say, 
real estate is hyper local you can't run off just what the u.s housing says or what the state of the market is the housing market is not the stock market it's totally different it's hyper local and it's hyper focused on whatever your town city that you want to live in but my projection for this year their interest rates are going to go up they're going to go down they're going to go up they're going to go down how much at a time i don't think it's going to be that much but i do think they're going to play with the rates a little bit where they're going to go up and they're going to go back down the good news is i don't think the rates are going to go over seven percent they're sitting at about six and a quarter percent today but i tell people look Owning a piece of property and buying a piece of property, it's not just an investment. Owning a piece of property and buying a piece of property, it's a lifestyle. You have to look at owning and buying that property. What lifestyle does it bring me and my family? And at the end of the day, always have no worries and have fun.